Hey everybody, it is that time of Gamescom again. My whole week has been leading up to this point. I think maybe my whole life has been leading up to this point. It's Forza Horizon 3 time, and I've been reunited with Ralph. We always do this at Gamescom, don't we? It's the highlight of the week for me. It is absolutely highlight of the year for me, mate, to be honest. So I think you've <laughs> underplayed that one a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but Ralph is a creative director at Playground Games. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. Um, most notably because I absolutely love Forza Horizon. I don't think that's news to anyone. And Forza Horizon 3 is looking ace. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You've been going, going well this week? It's been a great week, yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely love Gamescom, right? Because, like, one, I'm not jet lagged, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but it's the first opportunity we get to put the, the, the game in the hands of actual gamers, you know. Right downstairs uh, on the show floor, there's, you know, there's people queuing up to play our game, which is a really great feeling as a developer. Yeah, um, and yeah, so the game's nearly finished. Um, so we're able to show people lots of new stuff. Uh, that we haven't shown before and that's a thrill as well you know because there's Absolutely. so much great stuff in this game and that's what we're going to do right now uh -huh, so the, the yes. demo on the show floor that everyone's getting hands on with is the same demo that was at e3 that's correct right? yes we are going to show you right now all new gameplay for forza horizon so this hasn't been seen before um it's not been seen on the show floor as well so this mm -hmm. is going to be some really exciting stuff right? absolutely so yeah what we're going to see so this is this is kind of the behind closed doors demo that we're doing uh for people this week at gamescom and, and behind closed doors just for people who don't know what does that actually mean so that's uh so basically we have a room uh in the in the business center here at gamescom and we sit in it all day and journalists come uh, through to see the game uh, and we do a bit of a 20 minute presentation where we're, we're saying, hey, this is the new stuff you haven't seen, this is what's exciting about the game. Um, and I thought this would be great stuff to be able to show the, you know, the, the people at home, fans of the game, yeah. um, who are have, since E3 have been crying out to see more stuff from this game. And I thought nice. this is the opportunity to do it, right? So look at this, this is proper VIP behind closed doors in Ralph's lair here. It's a very nice lair. Yeah, it's all right, it's actually, it's not the worst, yeah. <laughs> right, so what have you been shown here then? So our goal this week was to show entirely new stuff. So we're showing new areas of the world. Over the next 20 minutes, we're going to see two completely different areas of the Australia uh, map that we've built for Forza Horizon 3. Uh, we're showing new vehicles. We're showing a couple of new features that I think you'll see uh, during the course of this presentation as well. Um, and we're talking also about Forzathon. Ask me about Forzathon a bit later on because I think there's some exciting stuff that certainly our fans are really going to want to hear Not as well. Great. The um, the cracked sand on here looks absolutely incredible. That must Doesn't be like it? that's a whole new sort of type of ground you must have put into this game. Right? It hasn't ever been in Forza before. It's an entirely that's in the back of the box actually. There's an entirely <laughs> new, new type, type of, of ground. ground. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So we are in the outback um, here, so that's why that uh, that uh, sort of earth is so arid and dry and cracked. And actually, occasionally we're seeing behind us a pink lake. Now there are nice. pink lakes in Western Australia. We went there and, and researched them. Uh, and I will give you a pound if you can tell me why the pink lakes of Western Australia are pink. Is, like it, my... is it it's the sun reflecting off the arid ground in the bottom, even though that wouldn't be arid, it's would it? Because so it's, it's got... moist. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Algae. Uh, what? Yes. Right. It's because of that pool at the Olympics. I've been of doing my research. Yeah. yeah, that was a well, dumb was question green, to though. ask. Is it algae? It, it is algae, yeah. 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 Literally <laughs> no one today in BCD's got that. In fact, most of them just looked at me like, well, what, what, is, what are you asking? <laughs> uh, we asked the question. So that's, that's the first time uh, I have been successful today. And there may be more to come. Uh, we'll see. We'll right. see. Hey, by the way, Andy is off camera. He's going to do the driving. So if this uh, Ford Raptor starts moving around and you don't see controllers in our hands, it's because Andy's doing it. Thanks, Andy. Right, so we'll get started? Yeah. Let's see let's, this thing moving. Let's go. Um, so yeah, you're right. This is the 2017 Ford Raptor, which is also a cover car. We've concentrated on the Lamborghini Centenario because it's awesome yeah, yeah. so far. But on the front cover of Horizon 3, uh, which is oh, just up, up you, there, yeah. we have a 2017 Ford Raptor jumping over the, the Centenario because uh, because cars. Just because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here we are in the outback. And so for me, this is like the most Australian bit of Australia, right? This is like quintessential Australia, the red earth and the big skies and this really sort of rugged um, and the terrain. Algae. And the, obviously the algae in the lakes, <laughs> uh, as you say. It looks amazing, um, absolutely incredible. It's not, it's not ugly, is it? No, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I, I think of all the areas that we were starting to research, I was kind of worried about the outback because I thought, is it a bit like a desert? You know, is it going to be fun? 
it's crazy fun and it's also got this really stark beauty to it as well yeah, which is a, a really real unique sort of biome and terrain isn't it so yeah must, in a way that's kind of that must have been going back to the drawing board for you because you can't reuse assets from previous games for this. oh no not so that i'm saying you would do that but this is like outside your comfort zone in terms of landscaping right? it kind of is yeah yeah i mean no we never reuse anything uh, you know we always build everything from scratch in each new horizon game um and so this is a gold mine, this is oh, an actual dude. gold mine um, that's in the outback. Um, but yeah, you're right, I mean... Oh, look at these! How many people have asked if you can drive one of them? Just you. <laughs> oh, Just okay. you. I'm on a roll. Can you drive <laughs> no, one of them? You <laughs> <laughs> Can you jump one of them? <laughs> I'm sure. Sure, why not? That'd be wicked. Yeah, absolutely. Them up. Oh, look so, at that one there as well. So this is one of... So we always build these... I mean, we call them like playground areas, right? Because yeah. they're built specifically so you can just go and have fun in cars in them and we play our, uh, our online playground games in them so you know like King and Infected and actually we've got a new one this time called Flag Rush um, so you'll be able to play all of those in arenas just like that one and of course you can explore it in, uh, in free roam and there's races set there as well so it's all pretty cool. Can I just say that if I, you know how like IGN and all the other magazines and websites give out awards? It shows like they this. They do, yes. Uh, every year I would give you best hot air balloons in a video game. <laughs> or every two well, years, it's whatever. A, it's a closely contested uh, category. Well, all these the are the you know, preeminent developers for hot air balloons. Thanks. So our, our hot air balloon team will be really uh, gratified <laughs> to hear that um, yeah. back at Playgrounds. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I should mention the skies, right? Because a lot of. Uh, a lot of incredible work went into that. Also, a lot of mortal danger as well. Um, these skies that um, you're seeing in the game here, they, that is an Australian sky, right? So we um, we built this uh, custom camera rig, right? 12K HDR rig, shipped it out to Australia. And some of our guys like camped in the outback recording what the skies did. And then incredible engineers back at Playground have created this revolutionary system that allows us to stream it in, you know, put it in the sky. So that's a, a real Australian sky, dynamically unfolds. It looks incredibly brilliant. And, you beautiful. know, it lights really the whole beautiful. of the world as well in a really naturalistic way. So and you say they camped in the outback? Totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like tents and stuff? Uh, in a, you know, kind of a, a camper van kind of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long were they out um, there? So some months some months on on and off some months yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing about the outback obviously is that everything there wants to kill you right. right and so and this camera rig is basically it's got lots of like crevices in it and holes where spiders are like yes Amazing. Um, so they had to de-spider it every time they went to change the lens and they have to change the lens every 50 minutes or, or an hour Seriously. or something like that yeah it's like uh what an experience um, that is right right who's absolutely. on spider duty today Ooh, <laughs> I, think, I think it's your turn that's incredible um, so and so if you've got an Xbox One S and a screen capable of showing it, you're going to really see the benefits of HDR here as well, Absolutely. Right? So the sky is probably the place where you see HDR in effect, uh, most obviously, because when we're looking at it, it looks amazing and you know the clouds are white. H in HDR, they become so many more versions of white, right? right? More, right. more white than you thought existed. And it's a kind of difficult thing to explain in words, I'm sure you've, you've found yourself, but um, it, it's once you see it, it's, you kind of can't unsee it. It looks more like a real sky than anything I've ever seen in a video game. Cool. So this is the race that we're gonna uh, we're gonna compete on. All right. Oh, already. Uh huh. And going yeah, yeah. straight in. We're going straight in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like it. All right. Well, let's do it. Um, I don't know if anyone else remembers. It's a big deal for me. Two years ago, uh, when Forza Horizon Two was coming out at Gamescom, we had a little head-to-head, -head, didn't we? And and uh, I think I won. Can't Did you? Me. Did I win? That's yeah. literally the, only the seventh time this week you've mentioned that. <laughs> it's just, um, I, uh, I, it made me incredibly happy. So it's time for your short it is. revenge. I'll tell you what we're going to do, actually. Um, so this is currently set up for the truck that Andy's in, but I want us to do this in buggies. So we're going to show right. off a little bit of Horizon Blueprint, nice. uh, which is a totally new feature in the game. Um, Horizon Blueprint is basically putting you in charge of the game you play, right? We're all different, we all have different tastes. Horizon Blueprint allows you to configure all of the events, all the gameplay in the game to your own personal taste. So, mm -hmm. like I say, I really like, like us to do this in, in buggies, uh, and Andy can just set that up um, using this tool. You can see all the different car types um, that are there. If I wanted to, I could go like super specific, I could specify the actual individual cars that are allowed. Um, and you can set up the race settings here so we can set time of day, we can set weather conditions. Um, and we are gonna, we can give it a name. There we go. 
Um, so the great thing about this, the reason we give it a name actually is because as soon as we create this, um, it automatically populates into um, all my, <laughs> all my, one, 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 all my friends' uh, games as well, right? Hey. So immediately that's there, then they can play the race I've created and they know it's from me because they'll see my gamer tag and What, by going to that, like that point in the map? Yeah, absolutely, you just rock up there. How cool and is that? I know, right? I love that. Are you going first? I'll go first. Yeah. I'll, I'll kind of show you the way. And this is part of the, essentially, the storyline of, of Horizon 3 now, right? You're, you're in charge of the festival, so you, you're in charge of creating You are events. the boss, yeah, yeah. So you make all, all the big decisions, um, and you know one of them is what kind of racing you want to do. And it extends beyond that. You can create your own Look bucket list these. challenges as well. So that's what we're going to be in. That's on the Lumicraft Class 10 race car. I'm well, sure yeah. you were about to... Uh, See, I am okay. a little bit worried that how you went straight for the buggies. It feels like you might have been preparing for this and maybe stacking the deck in your favour a little bit. Well, we're unstacking the deck because I'm playing in manual gears, which I don't oh. normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking earlier that I just recently started, actually when Motorsport 6 came out, started learning to play manual gears. So hopefully that gives me a wee bit of an advantage. So how much of a challenge was it to, to bring like a new type of vehicle into the game essentially so, again you're adding more and more so this one is quite a challenge um, it has some of the most uh, complex suspension I mean you can see it working there right on the yeah. side of the car some of the most complex suspension that we've ever had in Forza um, as we smash some poor guys fences <laughs> um, but they were, you know, this class of vehicle, I think, was like essential for this game. As soon as we saw the Outback and the kind of terrain that you're going to be racing Whoa, over. Oh, hello. Um, no, not the fences. Um, <laughs> um, you know, you really want to be bouncing over that in buggies like we're doing right here. This race is amazing, actually, because it goes up. Um, up into the hills. Uh, up into the hills. It's actually going to go through the gorge, Ormiston Gorge, which is in the like northern territories of Australia. Okay. Um, and it is pretty beautiful. It's actually one of the first places we researched and we just totally fall in love with, fell in love with it when we saw it. It's um, getting a little bit stormy over there as well. Is that going to roll in? Uh, we will see. I hope not. I'm in enough trouble as it <laughs> is. <laughs> How much of, you know, like real places and real inspiration did you take from the, the, the geography of Australia? So it's, every place is real. It's all based on, oh, uh, it's all based in real, on real places in Australia. The thing we did, the sort of the artistic license that we took, if you like, um, um, was in how we arranged them, right? So it's not a one-to-one -one geographical mapping of Australia, yeah. um, nor should it be, because you know we're making a game here first and foremost. Um, so we got all the beauty of uh, um, Australia, but arranged into a world that. Um, Try to put it on three wheels. That works, yeah. I've seen them oh. do that in YouTube videos. Um, that works as a game, right? It's great for driving, it's great for uh, discovery, it's great for exploration. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Steward's inquiry. This is surely allowed. This. Well, I'm definitely allowed a couple now as well. Oh, there's the other one. Uh, and you know, one of the things he you've said before is that Australia again gives you that incredible diversity of geography, of terrain, of landscape, right? I mean, totally. more so than really anywhere you've been in the Horizon um, before. It so is like. twice as diverse as Sports Horizon 2. How do we possibly measure that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, well, so we, we call them ecotypes, right? So every, yeah. like, you know, uh, rainforest is an ecotype, outback is an ecotype. Um, so there are six in Horizon 3. There were only really sort of three, maybe four in Horizon 2. Um, Whoa, and that was something we really wanted to give our players in this game, like a real sense of, like, as you move around the world, it changing and it becoming a... Was all, that was all right. I'll, third I will take place, third. Okay. I'll take so third. Um, You're doing it on position or time? 3.04. Uh, 3.04. Well, third and 3.04, 3.04, 3.04, yeah. yeah. Okay. So restart, right? Uh, restart, yes. I... Do want to restart the event? So what's my what's my shift? Is it face buttons? Uh, it's face buttons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shift up, shift down. Uh, shift up, shift down. Is that right, Andy? Red yeah, shift yeah, up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what? Okay, got it. <laughs> Messing with my mind. <laughs> Try to play tricks on me. He is trying to play tricks.
Uh, so yeah, sorry, to your question, uh, it is much more diverse than, than the last game, um, which is like what we, wanted, what we wanted to do, what we want to give our players in this game. Um, and we've really achieved that. And in fact, once we finish this race, um, we're going to head <laughs> over um, to a completely different area of the world. Again, yeah. it's an area of the world that nobody has seen before, which is why I was so keen to um, you know, get it on this, uh, this show. Um, we're going to go to Surfers Paradise because Surfers Paradise is the, uh, the city environment in Forza Horizon 3. Uh -huh. um, Surfers Paradise, again, it's a real place, it's a real city. Um, right. On Australia's Gold Coast, uh, it has a very famous um, V8 supercars race that's held in the streets there uh -huh. um, every, every year. Um, and it's the first time we've done like a really modern high-rise city. Uh, in the Horizon series before, which is something we really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, you know, we had the city of Nice in two, but it was very much, you know, architecturally very different. It's quite an old city. You're in first. You know it. Mm. I'm not um, saying much. I'm letting my driving do the talking. Yeah, I seem to remember that was the case last time yeah. as well. <laughs> That's probably, trust me, I can't do both at the same time. <laughs> All right, come on, stay on target. Yeah, because Surface Paradise is a pretty unique like it looks like it's been made in SimCity and it as a real place, know, right? It's yeah, so totally. like modern and new. It's and super shiny. Totally, um, yeah. And yeah, and, and the racing you'll do there is obviously completely different from the racing that you'll do in the Outback, um, which is kind of why we've, we've gone that way because we want you to be having a variety of experiences, um, lots of different driving experiences, so that one minute you could be racing through a gorge in, in a buggy uh, and the next you could be powering like a V8 muscle car around the streets of, uh, of Surface Paradise. Right. Oh no! Hello! Ah! Is this going to be I'm where you're going to use your rewind? Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was actually just doing the jump for the camera as well. <laughs> that's good of you. I thought it would possibly result in... I'm going to... I'm totally bailing out of there. Can I resume from there? Mm, yeah. Oh no! Okay. Nice. It's okay, that's alright, okay. that's I got okay. It. Ooh. Oh. Quick, Ralph, say something. I'm panicking. Uh, all those cars have just gone past you, Graham. How far are we through? 74%. That's okay. Dodge that rock. Yeah, it's nice. got you in it. So you're driving in water. So there's you know kind of a first for the Horizon yeah, series as well. Yeah, you feel it really dragging. Um, yeah, so obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And there's you know sort of water dynamics happening there and drag. Uh, and such like, and again, the type of car that you experience that in would, would determine uh, how much it slows you down. Um, taking a supercar through there are not going to work out so well for you. Yeah, it's not right. I was close to that. Cheeky. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's, oh, look at that car there. I don't oh, want to hit the back of that. Oh, it's a little... What? Fourth. Oh dear, the dream is over. That's been lovely talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> I thought I had it nailed on. Yeah. And it was automatic the whole time. <laughs> You're getting inside my head like that. Um, well, congratulations. Well done, Graham. That was a, that was a valiant effort. It took you two years. Uh, yeah. Yeah, two feels, years of solid the buggies, that buggy feels amazing though because you're really getting a sense of that like uh, mad suspension you really then, feel it bouncing over the totally. um uh, well that's why you've got to watch on those jumps so much because if you hit that uh -huh. just at a slightly yeah. wrong angle then you're you're away and that drag in the in the water is really noticeable as well and you know yes. so he even hitting the water at the right angle Absolutely, and really there's kind of a race strategy though. there as well. Not so much maybe in that race, although you, you do probably want to avoid it as much as you can. Yeah. There's other races where you're maybe skirting a reservoir um, and you want to keep your wheels away from just dipping into that deeper water. It could spin you, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's nudge a, an opponent in there. <laughs> um, there's a ton of, uh, yeah, there's a ton of variety in the racing as a result. We're kind of layering systems on system and features on features yeah. um, to, to, to change it up a lot We're all in still game. built on on essentially the you know the classic Forza physics models and That's all right. the engineering behind the scenes there. Absolutely, well, right? yeah. So a ton of work on this game has gone into um, 
tyre compounds and suspension, particularly for off-road. We have probably more off-road than we've had in previous games in this one. Um, so we want to make sure that it's um, it's really authentic and that cars deal with surface changes in a in a kind of authentic way as well. Which you um, you know, if you took a supercar onto that course, you know, the, the the results would be very very different. Absolutely. Hold the bus. What is this? <laughs> so this. I've never seen anything like this before. So this right? is a, so. This is the effect of the wide body kit, right? This is a Nissan 240SX, um, which is like a kind of 90s uh, car. And it's cool, it's got, it's got kind it's of like a, a drift classic, right? It is, yes. Um, but we've stuck a Rocket Bunny wide, wide body kit on this, <laughs> and it just kind of changes it, doesn't it? Um, it looks mad. Um, and there's been a ton of uh, sort of visual customization upgrades that we've added in this game. Um, is that something you heard from the Forza community? Were they asking particularly white, these wide body kits, which we know people go mad it's, for? It's one of the big, it's been one of the biggest requests, right? It's always been something that they want to do. And, and if I'm honest, it's something we wanted to do as well. Uh, we just felt this was the game where we were going to go and, uh, uh, and try and do it. Um, and we did, so we've got kits from Get Rocket that. Bunny, like this one, we've got kits from Liberty Walk as well. Yeah. Um, we've, really, um, we've really refreshed our wheel list. Um, as well in this game, we've added more than 30 new wheels uh, from really cool manufacturers. If you're into your wheels, you'll know 1552 and Rotiform and um, ADV1 as well. Um, so yeah, so there's a ton of new things you can do. There's more parts for more cars than we've ever had before. So um, if you're into visual customization of your cars, um, there's going to be a lot in this game for you. It looks incredible. This thing looks like it's a bit tricky to control as well. It's a monster. Yeah, it, it kind of is. So. So it's raining, a, a bunch of people have asked about weather in the game. Um, some people seem to think it doesn't rain in Australia, that's, that's not true. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely, you know, it can rain. Again, it all comes back to these skies. As they start to roll in, you'll see the big dark clouds roll, um, you know, across the sky, you know, dark, and, and you'll have that chance of rain. Um, which obviously changes up the, the visuals of the game, but also the handling as well. Ah, and this, uh, so this is the first time we've shown a drift zone, which is entirely new for Horizon 3, um, oh, and Andy is nice. making look pretty easy. Um, so yes, yeah, a sequence of bends as you'd expect, and we're gonna score you based on how many, uh, or how oh, big of a drift you can do around done. it. Um, Andy will be off the Formula D pretty soon on this show, <laughs> isn't he? It's incredible. Okay, so this is like, you know, the, the speed zones from previous, it's a new... Exactly, it joins like that. that family of things, so speed zones and speed traps, um, and uh, danger sign jumps as well, we kind of showed one of them at E3 um, as well. So they all sort of join that family, and again, you would, as you would expect, you get... Um, whoa! Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you get stars for them now, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, as Andy just did there, uh, but you also... Um, have a leaderboard in each one, so you're going to be compared yeah. to your friends. There's always that sort of social rivalry going on as you're uh, you're driving around the world. The drift community around Forza and Horizon, in particular, you know, guys like Domestic Mango and Don Joe on Song, they're going to love this. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. Uh, and that's the thing we've always known right from the first one. There's always been a really strong drift community within uh, Horizon. Uh, the drift zone is, I guess, uh, the first thing we've ever done really to speak to them specifically. But uh, um, there's I a can bunch see of drift in the body zones. kits and it's, even yeah. the styling of this type of car is, is playing to that community so much, isn't it? I mean, do you keep a track on, you know, those kind of YouTube videos that are going on? Oh, and, absolutely, oh. yeah. <laughs> very, Pause and wait. Very wise. <laughs> you want to show drone mode? We're going to show drone mode. Drone so mode. This is something we haven't what? shown before either, actually. So oh. any point within the game, you can just pop out and fly a drone. Oh, cheers, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of a cool, like people are uh, cool thing. People are always asking if they can uh, get out of the car in Horizon, and now yeah. you know, kind of they, they can. can. Yeah. Um, and you know, the people that make videos, um, you know, like those guys you mentioned, yeah. I think this is going to be a fantastic tool for them because it's a control over a camera that they've just never had before. Yeah, absolutely, um, it's totally you know a free camera that they can. Uh, um, they can fly, and that works in online, right? So if I was in an online session, or if Andy was in an online session, where um, appropriately, you know, you could just pop out into drone mode, film Seriously? your friends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, film them dri drifting around. You know, use it as to frame up the action. Oh, that's it's also incredible. it's a cool way to um, uh, to find barn finds as well. So you can just really oh, sort of zip around the environment, and it discovers that. things as you as you see them. Then you just have to pop to them in the map. That's really good. Um, so this is Surfer's Paradise. Just yeah. in the um, Popping over the horizon there, you can see the glints on the on the glass skyscrapers. 
Oh, and you've um, leveled up as well. That looks incredible. Is that a double rainbow? That is a double rainbow, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Australia Skies. <laughs> um, Talk to me about the Australian cars you'd put in here, because that's one of the things I love about that, is you've really gone for like Australian car culture in here yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. So there was a, you know, I guess there was a temptation just to set it in Australia. We didn't really want to do that. Um, you know, we want to, you know, sort of respect uh, Australian domestic car culture. Yeah. There's, you know, Australian music in there as well. Um, but, you know, in terms of cars, um, they have a different kind of car culture. The things that are important to them are different from, from us. You know, it's very much Ford versus Holden. That is like the mm. national rivalry. Mm. Uh, they love their Utes. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so we've got a ton of Utes in the game, basically. Um, and some real classic ones as well. Yeah, right? the, the so 70s. the very first, the very oldest Holden Ute is in the game. Um, so very sadly, this year is the last year of domestic production of Utes by both Ford and Holden. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're stopping making them in Australia. Um, but we have both the, the final Ford and the final hold, uh, Holden Ute um, in the game. Wow. Uh, we have like the 74 Sandman, which is a classic, you know, Australian uh, uh, panel van. Um, yeah, and there's a, there's a whole bunch, you know, I don't think you could make a game in Australia without really, um, you know, without really honoring that, that totally. tradition of yeah. cars. And um, it's, I think, you know, it, it's not, that well-known a car culture either, right? So it's, it'd be quite fascinating for people, I think, to see the types of cars that Australians... I, I totally, like. I, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, oh, one of the first it. cars that we offer you in the game is um, it, it is a ute, and it, right. it kind of looks unusual to us, but um, I, I love putting it, putting it in there because, you know, it's, it's contextual to the world that we've created. Yeah. I just can't hear ute without thinking of old school neighbors. <laughs> and imagining toadfish in the back there with a, a tinny or something. Although they didn't do that in Neighbours. All right, fantastic. And let's talk about music as well. We yes. Speak, we can't talk about Horizon without talking about music. So we haven't unveiled the, tr the full track list yet. We have not, although I imagine we have just unveiled some of the tracks that are in the game. Yeah, exactly. Just by, uh, by, <laughs> by streaming it. And it's sounding pretty strong already. I mean, what are you going for in terms of the, the sort of the music feel this time? So I, I think we've established kind of a Horizon brand in terms of music uh, over the previous couple of games. Um, what I really want the soundtrack to do is, is for it to appeal to more people, right? Mm. We have a really broad audience in Horizon um, and I'd love there to be music for everyone uh, in that game. And that's, that's kind of the, the, the tactic we've, we've used here. We have more radio stations than we've ever had before. Mm. Um, there are more styles of music uh, in the game. So like, people asked us for hip hop. Um, so we've got a hip hop station in the game. Yeah. People asked us for you know, like heavier rock than right. we've ever done before. Um, we have a station from Epitaph Records, um, which very much delivers that sort of uh, hard rock, hardcore punk as well as on that station. Right. Um, we have a kind of a more popular end of the rock scale station from Vagrant Records, who are this really awesome independent uh, record label who have uh, a bunch of artists. So we've got. I was about to start listing the artists. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a bunch of artists on that. You'll look up bigger records. You'll be able to find well, there you go. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a ton of cool stuff there, as well as like old favourites, the like Horizon Pulse. We never talk about Horizon Pulse and Base Arena because they're kind of staples, but they're back as well. It's Base Arena we've been listening to during this playthrough. Um, and I guess the um, you know the final piece of that puzzle because it's impossible to to put songs on the disc as it were that appeal to everybody because people's yeah. music taste is so di diverse and the way that we can genuinely say that in this game you can drive to the music you love is through the um the groove music right. uh, station uh, which you will unlock in the game uh, and which will allow you to stream your own music collection from your OneDrive, which is incredible like witchcraft um yeah. Uh, and also stream music uh, from the Groove Music service as well. If you're a subscriber, if you're not, you're going to be able to sign up for free um, for, a, for a trial. Um, and then you can just basically pull playlists down from that uh, and play them on the Groove station. So whatever you are into, um, it's possible for you to, to drive and listen to it in Horizon, which is Love great. Love that. And you've got churches in it again. Uh, we do have churches in it. That, that was kind of a no-brainer, right? Massively um, a fan of that. All right, brilliant. Have we got anything else to look at here? Just basically, we're just looking at a car in the auto show now. Can we just... Should we just sit we and just admire play? it? Yeah. <laughs> can we just... I wanted to look at the map and just have a... No, oh, we better not. We've got to save that for another time, I suppose, don't we? Or are we going again? 
Yeah, we, we could have a drive around, yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. have another wee drive around just then we can get finished up. So when, uh, we're very close to launch now, right? September the... Uh, September the 27th, 27th. We are out um, worldwide on Xbox One and Xbox One S, obviously, and uh, Windows 10 as well. Yeah, First time yeah. we've shipped on, uh, you know, on two platforms as so well, which is... How's that experience been? Um, it's really exciting. It's, I mean, it's super exciting. Um, I think the thing that excites me most about it is uh, the fact that it's a cross-play title, yeah. right? And I think oh, the uh, opportunities there for um, you know for, for us as developers are huge, right? Because suddenly it kind of doesn't matter what platform somebody's playing on. If they want to play with their friends in this game, then they can. And the you know the platform just works. It just works and brings people together. It doesn't distinguish between them based on the platform they're playing on. Um, I think that's going to be super exciting. Yeah, absolutely. All right, brilliant. So there we go. Forza Horizon 3, honestly, Ralph, looks absolutely gorgeous. Feels amazing, as usual. Uh, the music's great, the cars are great. I really, really like your game. And I just want to say congratulations. That's very nice of The you. only Thanks, problem man. with it is that uh, you finally beat me. So that was a bit <laughs> of a problem. I'm going to look back at that bit of footage there and just see like Analyze genuine it. disappointment in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gutted. It's, it's really about how you pick yourself up from this, Graham, that's important. That's right. It's not how many times you fall, it's how many yeah. times you get back up. All right, so I'll see you maybe in a couple of years and we'll do it all again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ralph, pleasure, mate, Thanks, as Graham. always. Thank you so much. All right, Forza Horizon 3 coming exclusively to Xbox One and Windows 10 PC, September the 27th. It's awesome. Trust me. See you soon. Bye.